does a hundred miles. Thank you, Flower. Thank you, Flower. myself. My name is Alyssa Birma. I am the Upper News River Keeper. I'm fairly new on the job. I've only been here for about six months. But the organization itself has been around for 29 years now. It was founded in 1980 because a group of people in New Bern took a look around and were concerned that what they saw, the beauty that they saw, and some of the problems that were starting to affect that beauty would affect it so greatly that their grandchildren and their grandchildren's grandchildren would not be able to experience the same thing. And so they started the New River Foundation in order to educate people about how vital the interaction between the human community and the environmental community and the, and the Noose River and its watershed really is that every single thing we do in our daily life impacts that river and everything that we do in turn is somehow because of the benefits of the river. We rely upon it for drinking water. We put our wastewater back into it. When we recycle, we help make sure that it stays clean. And so there is this integral connection that they really want people to know about. And since they have hired river keepers, we really want people to know about as well. It's a river, river keeper's full-time job to make sure that the water stays clean and safe for everyone that uses it. And for the animals and the plants that use it as well. You can think of, of me as the public advocate for the Noose River. Sometimes I'm a scientist, sometimes I'm a lawyer, sometimes I'm a teacher. It varies every single day, but that's because there are so many different types of issues and different problems that the river experiences that you really have to have a full toolbox. But one of the things that we're really excited about upcoming is actually our Tour de Nuce, because unless you're out on the river, unless you really experience it firsthand, it's difficult to understand why myself and other river keepers have such a connection to our rivers. It is this amazingly beautiful, ever-changing, and yet parts of it so constant and reliable, just fabulous body of water that it, I mean, it touches hearts and souls when you actually have a chance to be in it and around it on a daily basis. And this year, for the first time, we're inviting volunteers to join us we are going to paddle the entirety of the river from Falls Lake Dam all the way down to New Bern. It's almost 250 miles of waterway. And then actually join a bunch of other people for a flotilla from New Bern down to Oriental. But we are inviting everyone of all different skill levels to join us on our paddle and even trying to coordinate it on our weekends so that other people can join us without taking time out of their, their daily lives. So please come join us come experience what it's like to see everything from the fast moving water and sort of gravelly beds of up near Falls Lake to the incredibly slow, deep and wide, just beautiful rocky outcrops of some of the bottomlands by New Bern. That this river stretches every ecological river and type system that you can imagine. We have beautiful, um, swamps in the south end where they've even seen gators and some of the really beautiful southern shorebirds to very urban systems in the upper noose that we are that all of us in Raleigh and Wake Forest are familiar with and this is really everyone's opportunity to get in and get their hands in it and feel what the river has to offer. The other things that if anyone is interested in assisting with that we always have available are volunteer opportunities because there are ongoing issues and there's only so many people that uh, there's only so many hours in a day there's always more work to be done but we have some really interesting educational programs set up to help citizens identify what should and should not be happening in their own communities and who to call when they have a problem certainly they can always call me if they have a question I am the resource of everyone in the watershed if you live in and rely upon the Noose River watershed for something you are my client and I will respond to you if you have a question or a concern. But specifically, if there's construction going on in your area, and the town of Wake Forest actually sponsored a Muddy Water Watch class with us just a couple months ago, and there are some volunteers here now doing their darndest to really make a difference here. 
Um, I know for a fact they have. I've had some wonderful success stories. But our Muddy Water Watch classes are actually a free course that are designed simply to teach citizens what a construction site should and should not look like so that they know when there's a problem before it actually becomes a problem to the extent that our creeks are damaged or our streets are covered in mud. And this is one that we're really excited about and I hope that everyone will come join us if they have an interest in it. The whole portion is the Noose River watershed. It's actually about 6,200 square miles of, water, of land area and almost 250 miles from the bottom up to the bottom of Falls Lake, which is what is now considered the top of the Noose River. Historically, the Noose River started at the confluence of the Eno and Flat Rivers, but now that Falls Lake has become dammed and become a lake, the Noose River starts at the dam. The number one pollution problem, water pollution problem in the state of North Carolina and everywhere in the United States actually is, is this contaminated stormwater runoff issue. The stuff that comes off rooftops and driveways and goes down our storm drains, which are not, it, the water that goes down our storm drains is not treated before it's released into a creek or a stream and then eventually ends up in the river. It's not the same pipe that your toilet goes into and then is taken to a treatment plant before it is released. Anything that goes down that drain out in your front yard area or right inside the street goes straight to the river. Any paint, any grease, all the extra fertilizer that people put on their yards that is not actually required. I think if they provide more fertilizer the plants will grow more, but it's the Thanksgiving syndrome. You can only eat so much before your stomach is like, oh my gosh, I have to be done. Plants are the same way. They'll only take up a certain amount. And then the next time it rains, it all runs off and right into the storm drain and right into our river where you end up with problems like way too much algae or way too much mud if you're talking about runoff from a construction site. The other thing is that mud is sticky. It likes to hold on to things like bacteria and pretty nasty chemicals and fertilizers. So when you have a piece of land that's been cleared of all the vegetation in order to, to prepare to construct something. If that land is not properly taken care of so the mud can't leave the site, when it does leave the site, on its way to the stream, it picks up all kinds of nasty stuff that we do not want in our waterways. That's why we created the Muddy Water Watch program because sediment is one of the most significant components of contaminated stormwater runoff in North Carolina. And this is all over the state. This is actually now a statewide program that all the river keepers in North Carolina have joined together to try and teach citizens how to make a difference in keeping their streets and their waterways clean and clean.